today we are interviewing Martin Green, Professor at the Australian Centre for Advanced Photovoltaics, University of New South Wales. Martin Green, welcome and thanks for being with us. Yes, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. You came at Ecole Polytechnique to give a conference, which is part of the Coriolis Institute cycle on energy and environment, to prepare the Paris Climate Conference 2015 or COP21. The topic of your conference is more precisely on silicon solar cells. Can it be regarded as a power source for the future? Yes, that's what I'll be trying to convince the audience tonight. So I've been working on silicon solar cells for over 40 years now, and I've seen the uh, technology grow from its infancy to its present condition, where it's starting to become one of the lowest cost options for generating electricity, and hence has very real prospects of providing major amounts of energy in the future. At Ecole Polytechnique, we strongly believe in the development of solar energy. In fact, uh, one of our labs, the Laboratory of Physics of Interfaces and Fin Layers, works on improving the harvesting and storage of this energy. How are solar cells presently manufactured and uh, what future improvements can we expect? The silicon solar cells are made using technology that was essentially borrowed from the microelectronics industry. So um, when I started researching, the microelectronics industry was much larger than the solar industry, but now the situation is starting to change. But the same type of silicon wafers are used um, to uh, convert the sunlight to electricity is used in microelectronics except the technology has evolved and the, tech and the cost of making the wafers is very much cheaper than in microelectronics. So I think um, you know, that, that's the basis of the technology is the silicon wafer and uh, it's processed into a cell that then is packaged into a uh, under glass in a module and the module when placed in the sun converts the sunlight directly into electricity. So it's a very simple process, but the physics underlying it is, is quite complex. The costs have really reduced dramatically, particularly over the last five years. So the, the solar cells are, are like a fifth or less than the cost they were five years ago. So not everyone has caught up with that change, but that's um, given the technology uh, the opportunity to make a really large impact on the energy scene. So what used to be quite an expensive technology has now become a cheap technology and with the further potential for cost reductions, I think it's going to be the cheapest way of gener generating electricity within the next five to uh, ten years. So Ecole Polytechnique and uh, Kik Inno Energy have uh, launched a new certificate program especially on renewable energy entrepreneurship with the support from uh, the business school HSC Paris. Do you think um, that could help reduce costs and how can we foster innovation and entrepreneurship in that field? Yes, I, I think it's new people entering the field, like as the industry's got bigger and bigger, people from more diverse backgrounds have started entering the industry and brought new ideas in. So I think there's a real opportunity for entrepreneurs to get involved with the technology and the industry as it grows. So we've already seen um, some of our former students um, getting involved in the industry in a very entrepreneurial way and um, you know, having some impact. So um, you know, not only in the technology areas where there's, because of the demand for ever reducing costs, there's plenty of opportunities for innovation in the technology areas, but also in the, in the business type areas and in the financing of the installation of the systems. There's been a lot of innovation, sort of financial engineering type of innovation in those areas as well. One of my students actually became the first solar billionaire in that he was the first to successfully manufacture the cells in China. And the cost of make, making the cells in China is a lot less than in Europe or in Japan or United States where the cells used to be made before. So um, he's probably the most successful example um, he started a company in China that was able to float on the New York Stock Exchange in what was the biggest technology float of 2005. And that sort of spearheaded this, this cost reduction that we've seen recently, the increase in manufacturing capac capacity, particularly in the Asian region, has really been the driver for reducing the costs. But we have other examples in the business area well, as well where some of our students in the US in particular, there's more opportunities for financial engineering 
type of innovation there than in Australia, and they've been successful in developing new financing schemes for the, um, for the solar panels. Mm -hmm. So in the US, most of the owners of the solar panels, the, the people that put on them on their private homes, et cetera, don't actually own the panels but lease them. So some of those leasing models are, are developed by former students from, from our centre in Australia. Interesting. Oh, you also initiated the solar photovoltaics group at the mm -hmm. University of New South Wales. Can you tell us a bit uh, what's your take on the solar energy and its future in the next 10 or 20 years on a global scale, but maybe more specifically also in Australia? Yes, so the industry uh, is growing very quickly. So um, it's one of the few industries that continued growing through the global financial crisis. And ever since then, it's been growing more rapidly. Um, so that uh, I think uh, everywhere around the, you know, the beauty of the technology is it can be used anywhere around the world. There, there's a big difference in the amount of sunlight in say the Arctic and, and the Mediterranean, but it's not as large as the difference in other resources such as wind or you know, the, mm -hmm. um, the fossil fuel type resources, for example. So the, the resource is more uniformly distributed than most resources. So um, I guess we'll see increasing use of the cells, particularly as they continue to become cheaper and cheaper. The, the demand for them is just going to grow, keep growing. Um, in Australia, the main uh, application has been on private homes, and that's mainly been driven by the homeowners rather than the government. But because the retail price of electricity is quite expensive, mainly through the way the, the power companies are managed in Australia, it's a, it's a public-private mixture of companies, and that's caused a few distortions in the market, I, I would say. Um, but retail wholesale electricity generated by the power stations is very cheap in Australia, but by the time it gets to the homes, it's quite expensive. But together, combine that with the large amounts of sunlight in Australia, it means that um, it is it very early became economic to generate your own electricity with solar panels on the roof of your own home. So that's been the major market, and I think that will continue to grow. But the next phase of that development is probably commercial buildings like shopping centres and things like that, having solar cells on the roof of, your, of these, these big complexes because they also pay more, much more for electricity than the wholesale price. Is that something that you see everywhere similarly in Australia or do you see a difference between north and south and depending on the amount of, uh, of sun, sunlight uh, that they get? Yeah, yeah, so it depends uh, both on the sunlight and just the local cost of electricity. Okay. So that can vary around, you know, most of the control of the electricity market um, is at a state level so that uh, we have, you know, six states in Australia and um, the, the electricity prices differ between mm -hmm. the states. So um, Queensland, which is towards the north of the country, is, is um, very actively taking up solar because of its abundant sunshine, but South Australia, which is in the south of the country and in the southern hemisphere, that means you're further away from the, the areas of the stronger sunlight. Um, they have also taken it up, but that's because electricity is quite expensive there. Mm -hmm. And that sort of situation occurs around the world as well. So Germany, for example, um, doesn't get as much sunlight as Australia, but their electricity is even more expensive than Australia. So they have a very strong market for photovoltaics as a result of that. So regarding all this, would you encourage Ecole Polytechnique students to do a career in uh, renewable energies and more specifically in solar energy? Yeah, I think that would be a very good career choice. And there's several different opportunities, both technical and financial opportunities, I believe, within the industry. But um, it's still a relatively small industry compared to um, other industries like the car industry or the oil industry. But um, the feeling is that it's grown to grow to that type of size. So it's a very good time, I think, for people to get into the industry and, and grow with it. So I, you know, I think all indications are it's going to be one of the larger industries of this century by about mid-century and uh, uh, correspondingly has um, many career opportunities. Martin Green, thank you a lot for being with us today. Thank you.